So it seems like the controversial theme with the new M2 Max is that the base models are kind of compromised in some way. Now, we saw this initially with the first M2 Max, like the MacBook Air, that had lower SSD speeds on the base model, and we saw it again on the base level M2 Mac Mini, and now we are seeing it even with the pro versions of Apple's laptops which features slower SSD speeds compared to the same storage tier from two years ago. And on top of that, not only do you have to worry about these lower drive speeds, but in the case of the 14 inch MacBook Pro, it also ships with what appears to be a compromised chip because this entry level M2 chip lacks two performance cores and three GPU cores and adding these onto the MacBook Pro is an expensive $300 upgrade or 15% of the cost of the MacBook Pro itself. And you're probably wondering with all this controversy and seemingly all of these downgrades, is this base level MacBook Pro, is it really worth it? Or should you avoid it? And what are you missing or perhaps gaining by going for this lower end model? All right, the first question you probably have is, what am I missing by picking this Mac? Well, to Apple's credit, the only difference with their laptop line besides the sizes for these pro models is boiled down to chip selection, memory selection, and storage. That's it. So each MacBook comes with the same display, the same speakers, the same webcam, the same keyboard, trackpad, design, et cetera, et cetera. And those are pretty much the same ones that are in the previous MacBook Pros. Now, obviously when you're uh, you know, deciding between the 14 inch and the 16 inch model, you do gain some things, right? So if you're getting a 16 inch model that gets uh, better battery life and it does get like it does get better speakers too because it's bigger but what that means is that even if you're buying the lowest end 14 inch macbook pro you are still getting an excellent laptop display which may be the best overall laptop display in the market with a combination of not only sharp resolution but high brightness and hdr capabilities and also a really nice high contrast ratio thanks to the local dimming offered by the mini led display and it makes it absolutely gorgeous like this thing gets really close to OLED levels of performance, and that in combination with the fast 120 hertz refresh rate makes every interaction you have with this Mac feel smooth and responsive. Speakers continue to sound excellent, especially for the smaller size 14 inch model, and it is clear and crisp and has surprisingly good bass for a laptop speaker. You can also crank the volume and the laptop gets very loud with almost no distortion at higher volumes. The 1080p webcam in the front is great for video calls and the MacBook Pro comes with plenty of port options, including a dedicated MagSafe charging port three Thunderbolt USB-C ports, a headphone jack, and even an SD card slot. And now it has an improved HDMI 2.1 port that can drive an 8K display or a 4K display at higher refresh rates. All of these hardware features are accompanied by an excellent Magic Keyboard with Touch ID, the best trackpad on any laptop, and I mean any laptop, and an excellent build quality that is premium and tough at the same time. But this information mostly isn't new because it's kind of like a refresher to show you that these hardware features may be the real reason to go for something like a base model before we even get into performance. Because let's face it, the regular M2 chip itself is already so far beyond in capabilities at this point for what most normal users need it for. So a potential buyer for this model of laptop may just want features like the better display or the additional port options over something like a MacBook Air, and that alone might be worth the $2,000 asking price before we even get into how this specific model performs. So you're watching this video, you, you wanna know that information. So with that out of the way, obviously your next question is, how is the performance on that base model chip? And if you don't care about this, you can leave the video now. You found out it's a great laptop, but if you care about the performance, stick around because the base model is shockingly good with one exception. And let me address the elephant in the room. Yes, the base level solid state drive is slower than last year's M1 Pro model. And whether or not that directly affects your performance workflow is really dependent on how often you swap memory with the SSD, or the easiest way to measure this is how long it takes you to transfer a large file. But here's the kicker. If you're doing stuff like file transfers, well, you're gonna need an SSD that's actually faster than the internal drive. For this test, I use a SanDisk drive, which has like a thousand read and write speed. And because it's not faster than the base level MacBook Pro's drive speed when I did a 50 gigabyte file transfer uh, between the base level MacBook Pro and a one terabyte version, it took the same amount of time. So you may not see any speed improvement results at all if you don't have even faster external drives than what this internal storage is. And that is actually kind of hard to come by. You're gonna need external Thunderbolt SSDs. And even a lot of those aren't as fast as the internal drive in the base level MacBook Pro. 
But nuance is important here. And yes, I'll be the first one. I'm, I'm targeting you directly, Apple. I'm saying this to your face. You should not ship, you know, the next model of these with any specs that are lower. They should be equal or better, especially if you're charging the same price. That's why I wasn't harsh on the M2 Mac Mini. You lower the price, you can make you can make that decision to lower the SSD speed drives. That's fine. But when you're when you're shipping these at the same price, you should get better or equal performance. But I do also have to say that with my own workflows, with my own personal use of using these base models, I haven't noticed the decrease in SSD speeds. Now, I'm sure if you did a bunch of tests side by side and, you know, you did the file transfer test and then you did, you know, this export test and blah, 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 you go really scientifically into it. I'm sure you would notice the second differences, the, the little differences here and there. But I'm telling you, as someone who has been working with this, uh, these laptops, these desktops, all with M1 or M2 architecture, uh, even going up to all the way to like the M1 Ultra Mac Studio, for me personally, I don't notice the day-to-day -day difference in performance. Again, I know you can get those scientific tests where it shows you, yes, this, there is a difference here, but I think most users aren't going to notice the difference in that lower SSD speed. Again, I don't think it's right, but it is what it is, right? Like if you're buying this going, oh no, this SSD is going to be very slow. I, I shouldn't get it. I should upgrade this. Well, you're probably not going to notice. And hey, listen, it's slower than the M1 Pro's base model SSDs, but it's still getting pretty fast read and write speeds. Like it's not as slow as what you would find in the M2 base model chip. So it's still, it's still a decent SSD. But the phrase that best comes to my mind when I think about this laptop is, you win some and you lose some. So yes, the SSD speed being decreased is definitely a loss. However, there are also some wins here as well. And that is that the base level M2 Pro chip, I think, is an incredible value. The best way that I can describe the base level M2 Pro chip is that it's like getting the full 10 core M1 Pro chip from the last MacBook Pro for free. Here are some CPU scores from Geekbench. Obviously, the M2 Pro has an advantage in single core performance, which means for basic level tasks, which rely heavily on single core performance, the M2 Pro uh, 10 core version is going to be just as fast as the full 12 core variant. In multi core performance, the performance is very, very similar to the full 10 core M1 Pro version, which used to be a $300 upgrade on the older MacBook Pros. Furthermore, even with the lower end 16 core GPU, that is the same number of GPU cores that was found on the full M1 Pro chip from 2021, not only is it the same number of cores on the M2 Pro base model, but it actually performs better. Yes, it performs better thanks to the huge GPU gains on the M2 architecture. So even with the same number of GPU cores, we are seeing around a 10% performance boost on this base level M2 Pro chip compared to the flagship M1 Pro chip. Now, if we're comparing a full 19 M2 Pro chip to a base M2 Pro chip, the graphical differences are about the same percentage difference, just going in the opposite direction. A uh, boost, uh, probably not worth the $300 upgrade if you're just buying that upgrade for GPU performance alone. What might be worth it though is the combination of that slight increase in GPU performance with the multi-core performance on the M2 Pro, because with the full M2 Pro CPU, you can expect to see around a 30% increase in multi-core CPU performance, which is pretty impressive. But the point remains that this base level version of the MacBook Pro offers a lot of value for users that skipped out on the initial M1 Pro model, because the percentage increase goes the opposite way as well for that CPU, gaining a 30% increase from the base level M1 Pro model. And although I would never say no to sticking as much performance into this laptop as possible, there is one hidden benefit by going for that lower CPU count and that lower GPU count, and that is better battery life. Now, I haven't fully tested different versions of this MacBook Pro, but last year's M1 Pro MacBook Pro base model had better battery life compared to the models with the more performant CPU cores. And this year, the base model has an extra two high efficiency cores, meaning that it will probably engage the higher performance cores less often, thus actually leading to significant battery life gains. This better battery life difference was even more apparent in the M1 Max models of the 14-inch MacBook 
MacBook Pro with the more power hungry GPU, which led to significant battery drain, especially when engaging all of those cores. In fact, an early test from Tom's Guide already saw the same issue with the M2 Pro version of the MacBook Pro, which gained over an hour of battery life compared to the M2 Max model and actually scored a little lower than the previous M1 Pro. However, these are tests using the full CPU model, so it's only fair to assume that this 14-inch base model will see even better battery life running those same tests, which kind of sums up a lot of this review. Just because you're picking the lowest end model doesn't mean you're sacrificing in every area, and the base model of this MacBook Pro has some gains and some losses compared to the previous model. So don't be fooled. Even though it may seem like you should avoid this base level MacBook Pro, especially with all the clickbait videos and articles that have targeted the base model, I think it's actually a good all around MacBook for hardware, performance, and battery life. And it's probably the model you should consider first if you're in the market for a new MacBook Pro. And hey, if that SSD speed really bothers you, I would recommend upgrading to the one terabyte hard drive. That's gonna be 200 additional dollars. And then uh, you can skip out on that extra $300 CPU and, and GPU for the full M2 Pro chip. And you're still saving $100 from those models and you're gonna get the faster SSD speeds. You're gonna get additional storage, which is always nice. And you're not gonna have to worry as much if, if that really bothers you. But I think most people are going to be fine with that base level drive. All right, but those are my thoughts on the base level model of the 14 inch MacBook Pro and, and really the base level models of most of Apple's computers that they ship this year. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and drop me a like. And if you really, really like the channel, hey, a subscription, it's always appreciated in these tough and trying times. As always, thank you so much for watching the video. And I'll see you in the next one, because let me tell you, I miss you.